All right. Oh, man, I made a huge mistake, John. I didn't steal a screen from you. Oh, steal it. Yeah, there's still time. To Jimmy screwed it. up. Oh, <laughs> my God. I got to hit share sound. So it sound looks good. It gives us character. Uh, it does, I guess. Let's see if uh, hopefully John won't screw up. Look at that. Pretty yeah. fast. All right. Look at that. Pretty hey, fast. everybody. Uh, just a reminder, this is brought to you from by Visual Arts Passage. Um, we are a mentorship resource that assists illustrators, character designers, and painters in career in their career development. Um, you're doing it quite a while. And uh, check out, if you haven't checked us out, check us out. So we're ready to draw, I think. All right, let's go. Um, everybody, thanks for tuning in. If you're here to draw from reference, you're in the right place. I am going to, uh, John, are you are you going to cycle through your images? Yep, I'm going to. Oh, I, I thought, sorry. I yep. was throwing tonight, out. the topic, <laughs> and we'll see how many fans we lose tonight, uh, especially <laughs> because this is a very opinionated uh, uh narrative tonight um you give, you give me the keys to the car and something's going to happen well so. i was thinking john that means next year if we do a super bowl we're going to have to do all winning team so okay well so we can do the chiefs again so, yeah <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> uh, um here's my reference that i pulled and i think it's all fun i love the fact that everybody's got an open mouth um, and I wanted that to be the thing that linked everybody together. Um, had to throw Taylor Swift in there as much as people don't like it, but definitely um, a lot of uh, uh, conjecture, a lot of uh, discussion about it. But um, hey, it happens. And and so that that's, you know, at the top is uh, the great Chris Jones to the right. Um uh, Patrick Mahomes, bottom left, Travis Kelsey, and bottom right, everybody knows Taylor Swift. Um, the first uh, couple of poses we do tonight are 20 minute poses. Uh, Timmy's going to tell you and you know ask you to post and tell you where to post. Um, and then the last pose, the, third, the last post is a 40 minute pose. And we will, uh, you can either draw one of them, draw two of them, draw one all night. Doesn't matter to us. This is a place to get some uh, up your drawing skill or painting skill, whatever you're doing in here. So I think we're ready to go. Yep. Time to draw. Yeah, everybody. So um, if you're uh, if you're drawing along with us, please share your work throughout the night uh, to Instagram. We are going to come up with some hashtags. I think we already got the one we want, um, but uh, you're going to just post your work and in the caption, uh, it'll be hashtag drawing hive and at visual arts passage and our special tag for the night, which I I'm going to call it. It's hashtag dynasty hive. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, everybody uh, get to draw and let's go. I like that. Which I was going to say, I I was thinking, you know what? we don't need to do the Super Bowl. It was last week. And then uh, I was reading most watched televised event in history. Pretty wild. Yep. You know, it's Pretty terrible. Wild. I did not watch it. I hey, was celebrating I think you're the with only... my family. <laughs> Cut her off, Timmy. Cut her off. Right <laughs> no. Most watched televised event. Uh, someone said it was it was close with the uh, the moon landing. Yeah. Which the joke was, but they're both scripted. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you ask my grandmother, uh, the yeah. movie was scripted. <laughs> yeah, it's it's okay if you didn't watch it. It's okay if you're not a fan. We're just drawing. That's right. These are some good, there's some good references, and that's what we're doing every week because we're just finding something that's interesting to draw. This. Mm -hmm. Usually, you know, it's kind of fun when it's topical because we can have a conversation about it. It's on top of mind for everybody. Um, I'm Cassandra. I'm kind of holding off on my camera. 
uh, because I was waiting till um, the educational section went by. Oh, yeah, that's always great. I am skipping ahead and I am going straight to Feast of Bacchus first because I wanted to paint this one so bad. So thank you to me. <laughs> Well, uh, you know what is actually pretty cool. Uh, John, you remember, I'm sure you remember Rob Jordan. Early, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Early days of Visual Arts Passage on the topic of like finding something you love and then making a career out of it in conjunction with what your talent is. Rob Jordan is an illustrator, went through Visual Arts Passage, and uh, Rob works with the NFL now. Did you know oh, that? That's awesome. You know that. Yeah. He's a hired, he's an in house illustrator. So How cool was that? And it started, yeah. I'm trying to think what what was the the first stuff he was getting was through it was all sports. I'm trying to think what it was. Yeah. It was like an online uh, sports journalism. Yeah, it was it was like a a smaller a Bleacher Report. I mean, not yeah, not like super small, but no, just, no. But it was the first stuff he was getting was with the yeah. Bleacher Report. But he's with the NFL. I saw LeBron James yesterday shared Rob's artwork, which is pretty crazy. Wow. Yeah. So shout yeah, out cool. to shout out to Rob. And and that's a good testimony to it's it's not always a bad idea to draw an NFL player. <laughs> You're right. You mean our students get jobs? <laughs> yeah, right. That's yeah. a little well, so also good. like mouth open poses are are like really good to practice on because they're they're tough. But I, when they work, they're awesome. What is tough about it? Well, you're changing the 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 proportions of the face as you know them. So when you open oh. that mouth, like the jaw often goes back and the top of the head goes back a little bit. So that changes kind of where the proportions of things are. And, you know, you have to be careful about how you include the teeth and the tongue. Like you'd never want to make assumptions. You want to really look at those shapes and that space and that positive and negative of like what's dark in the mouth versus what's light. Man, Cassandra, you're making me rethink everything I'm doing right now because I'm drawing the mouth right now. <laughs> you're going to do great. Hey, Adam. Hey. How'd you do? Hey, Adam. How's everyone doing today? We're good. Awesome. Doing great, Adam. Have you... Uh... I well, I was just listening to your uh, episode on Studio Bridge with John. That was great. Oh, thanks. That was a that was a, I, that was a lot of fun. I, it was. I enjoyed it thoroughly, and uh, you did a great job with it. It was fun, you know, digging through and looking at all those pictures. And uh, I hope Timmy remembers the very first slide, the very first image. Uh, no, second image that you did at the Illustration Academy. <laughs> urinating the the dog urinating the name timmy in the snowbank <laughs> it's pretty great i haven't gotten to listen to it yet but i'm looking forward to it it was very well done well adam did a good job Let's don, don does an amazing job of like keeping people on track too like without them knowing he's doing it yeah, so when he starts talking about aliens, you got to rein them in a little bit. Right. <laughs> when the aliens started coming at me. I had to kind of look for a new um, venue for my work. And it's right. like, Adam, let's come on. Let's pull it in. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anybody been working on anything uh, special this week? Aliens. Really, Adam? Can you elaborate? <laughs> Are you uh able to talk about it much? Well, yeah, it's my that's it's my book. Uh, the 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 aliens are not ready to go home. My my a, real follow up to the froggies do not want to sleep. And that's a children's book. Yes. What age? What uh? What age range? Um, like very very like preschool to uh, I don't know seven eight. Yeah. Maybe fifty. Does that change the way you illustrate? You think? Um, I don't. I don't. I don't know, to be to be perfectly honest, because mm. um, especially that now that I'm in the the painting stage, it's just they sort of like yeah. they're just sort of barreling along in their own way. Um, 
But uh, you know, it's it, so much of it is. I, I I think in in writing it, it sort of like kind of made the pictures what they would have to be. Um. So so my approach in the making the pictures isn't so much I audience based so much as it's just this kind of story. And you know the the characters look like. I don't know. I had. I, oh, here he is. I'm going to step across the room for just a minute. Be right back. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. He fell over and his hand broke off, but he's he's. Well, that is them. awesome. <laughs> I love him. How did you make that, Adam? He is. A, he's made out of a uh, sculpey. Love sculpey. And then, I want to uh, put a sculpey in acrylic. Wow. Is that baked? Yeah. Yeah. You bake it at, I think it's like 250, um, like 15 inches per like half inch of thickness. So he's got like wow. a old tin foil base that he's sculpted around. Wow. Do you just start with the tin foil or do you make an armature and then put the sculpey, like and then the twin foil and then it... I really probably should make an armature, but I just started with I just start with the tin foil and make like figure out his the torso and the, the main bulk of him. Nice. And I, I had some you know sketches that I'd worked out with and then realized that like, you know, he, he has to turn in a lot of directions. <laughs> But he's he's like one of twelve characters, so it's I it well actually so it's 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 sort of the hardest thing I've ever done except I also just started working on a book about a a, a train that got restored like a couple of years ago and um that one might turn into the hardest thing I've ever had to do but so far it's it's the the one that I just created all the problems for myself and. What is so hard about the train one? Uh, I think that it's a train. <laughs> it's a giant perspective. It's a, great, it's a great. That's what I was gonna say. That's a great that's answer. Five thousand parts to it. Well, let's see if I can find a picture um, on my phone really quick to show you what it's sort of like up against. Pretty funny. Because uh, I, you know, I. There's a uh, the train itself is in Wisconsin, but there's a like a sister to it in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And uh, I drove out. Denise and I drove out to to see it and do some you know photo referencing and research. And uh, the train was called a a, a big boy. Um, because it's the largest locomotive ever. Mm. Oh wow! Um, so like this is like what it looks like on my phone oh cool but if we zoom in there's a little arrow there and that's my wife oh my gosh okay yeah that is a big boy so so she's five nine and she's almost as tall as one of the wheels wow that's and so uh... it's, it's that thing in like as many perspective for, because it's like the character in the book so yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how many different perspectives you can look at it from to get it, you know, to, to keep the story moving. Well, and how all puns included for the train. Um. <laughs> I know, you know, and that's the, this, this is the side of me that sometimes gets to be like very earnest research heavy work. Well, and like how detailed do you make the train? How much is necessary? Like is yeah, the train that's, a that's, character? That's, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the visual language for that. Mm. yeah okay like I knew it would be hard but I was just curious to what extent like what what makes it so hard and complicated yeah, some of it is figuring that I, I can hang on there's a one's right here I've got so one of the value studies I was working out today kind of we were to travel Ooh, that's awesome I'm kind of trying to make the steam one of the characters in the book too since it's a steam locomotive yeah you got to do good steam um but then you know this guy uh one you know they're all real people um they're all you know like alive and they they finished this work in like 2019 so but that was like kind of too small for me to actually draw the conductor so then i had to do like another study of him to kind of photoshop in there mm. 
Um, but you know, the, the, the train, it's, you know, that's the close, that's a, you know, that's my human close up. but everything else, like you back up and the train just keeps going and going and going. Um, you know, but, but it goes through places too. So there's like, you know, there's stretches of it that are going to be all more like landscape paintings that happen to have the world's largest train in them. So is this a kid's book or is this just an illustration of their restoration journey kind of thing? It's a, it's a kid's book. Okay. About the restoration journey. Yeah. Okay. I knew it was about, I just wasn't sure like who the audience was aimed at. But they, you know, I, I guess that, that gets us into one of the other funny things about, about doing things for kids is you never, and, and I think this goes a little bit too for like what Timmy was asking, you never actually change how you work for kids because your audience is the precocious ones who are interested in what you're doing. Right. So like, this is, this is for the kid who likes trains. And the kid who likes trains already knows more about this than I do. Right. Um, as a matter of fact, actually, the, the guy, the main, you know, the, I, so I've been watching all these videos from Union Pacific about the restoration of the train. And the lead, like, engineer on the project who eventually gets to drive the train across the country when it's done. Um, and he said, like, you know, his parents had a picture of him at, like, four. And he's holding, like, a model train. And it's... It's not this one. It's the other train in his fleet that he had restored from like the ground up. Wow. You know, which was, I think they call that one the living legend because it's the only train that's actually been in constant service since it was introduced in say like, the, I don't know, the 1920s or 30s. Um, but he has a picture of himself with this as his favorite toy and he winds up like, you know, working with it as an adult. <laughs> and, and those... So I'm picturing him as a child is who the child is that's going to need this book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. You guys ready for a little education? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Because I, I, I'm not going to draw or paint until after I get through this. So for if anybody's joining for the first time, this <laughs> is this is our educational segment. All right. OK, before you start, John. Gosh, I feel smarter already. <laughs> Hopefully I sound a little smarter. Uh, all right. So Nikolai Fetchin, a uh, really fabulous Russian-American painter, born early 1800s, I think 1881, and um, kind of ended up here in the United States around 1910, started uh, showing work here. Um he was a massive influence. A lot of the illustrators of my dad's ilk were all discovered him. Um, first person I actually heard speak his name was a great illustrator by the name of Bob Peake, Robert Peake. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did some illustrations that kind of leaned into this stuff real heavily. Uh, my dad uh, really loved his work a lot. And when I started drawing, my dad handed me a book and said, uh, look at this guy. Um, and I did a lot and I still do a lot. I think he was one of the greatest draftsmen that did things in an observational way that had design and interest at just the highest level. A lot of ateliers point to him as being one of the greats. And I certainly think he... He definitely was, or definitely is. He lived into the mid-1950s, 1955, finally died of tuberculosis. When he was here in the States, he moved to, after being in New York for a while, he moved to Taos when he uh, got um, uh, <clears throat> diagnosed with tuberculosis. He needed to be in the drier air. And there's actually a museum uh, of his work his house and studio uh, that when he was in Taos is uh, in existence. And uh, if you ever have the opportunity, go and look at it. He also 
fell in love with the kind of uh, subject matter of the Western landscape, that Southwest landscape and uh, Native American individuals and did a lot of, a uh, lot of work wrapped around that subject matter. But this guy just impeccable drawing, acclimate, built in with an emotional quality um, and, a, and a sense of design which which what I think makes these things so beautiful. Look at the mark making, the variation, you know, changing languages from shape to line, lassoing shape with line, the interest. It's like he's one of the, you know, first time that I ever discovered it's like you look at his line and it's got great information in it. You can see, you can even determine where the light source is coming from some of his line, a harder edge on one side, softer on the other. Um, just magnificent and also his choices of what to leave undone um and how to design you know make a a, a head that's vignetted against white which means it's floating a vignette there's different types of vignettes but generally it's like um losing things to white as it gets to the edge of the page and he did such complete pictures with these vignettes just because they were just great design. Hmm. He was a wonderful, really wonderful painter too. I kind of became more interested in his paintings after you know studying his drawings for a long time. But that's a self-portrait. I love that one. Yeah, I absolutely adore these things. There's so much emotional quality to them of what to leave undone. Hmm. And then, you know, the ability to come in and finish and say so much. And it's like, you know, everything's so perfectly drawn, but still, you know, got this wild use of material to support it. You know, the contrast between the two. Great mark making, use of material. You know, the characterization of that figure. Hmm. Look at that hand on the right. You know, there's nothing there, but it still works. <laughs> I just love these things. And somebody, if you really, if you really want to up your your drawing game, take a look at take a look at his work. Do some. That's that's how I learned how to draw. As my dad put those in front of me and said, "Just do drawings of this guy's work for a while." And along with the observational stuff that that I was doing, but it taught taught me like sensitivity with material. Um, you know, you start thinking about composition in your drawings when you look at his work. There's a sensitivity to all of his work that's just amazing. How big are these paintings? Good question. Um, I've seen quite a few of them, and you know, usually the heads are at least life size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Funny story, uh, Cassandra. Um, I noticed when I'm looking through the book, when I'm 16 years old, looking at all the books, and I got to see this one drawing. I go, God, that looks really familiar. My dad owned it. It was hanging in the our living no room. No way. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> gosh. He, he, had traded, he had traded a painting for one of his drawings, like in the early seventies. That is so cool. I don't think that, I think the value of his work right now would be, you know, you would have to trade your house for one of the drawings. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> but uh, just love these things. You know, I haven't looked at his work in a while and I, you know, you showing it again just reminds me of what a master he is. He was a master and influenced so many artists. You know, uh, I, th I think it was like taking the um, the sensibilities of, of a academic Russian painter and crossing it with the Impressionists. And this is what like got filtered through, <laughs> um, and you know, and then and then really under understanding design at a really high level. So it's just magnificent stuff. Mm 
so anyway, that's my that's my spot for tonight. The the, the artist that you know that I would lean lean in heavily as a drawer. There's somebody that that understood the you know had really great understanding of drawing, and it wasn't just a copy of something. It was a there was a visual voice to it. There a visual language that he that, that languages he put together with use of line, texture, shape, and he made really magnificent drawings where they were just. They were great drawings besides being just really well drawn. Uh, they were exciting. So that's my, that's my uh, bit for tonight. I'm going to stop sharing again. John, that was great. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thanks. Yeah. You can, you can kind of see the influence in places up there. Behind. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Especially that one on the left. Yeah. All right. Bill Coe wrote a blog post a couple years ago uh, on on the art of loose drawing, and talked quite extensively about uh, Nikolai Fitch. And I'm going to see if I can find it and share it. It's a great one. But on the topic of the blog, uh, Sterling Hunley contributed to the blog last week. Some great stuff. What does he know? Yeah. I know. <laughs> He's the, yeah, we got Patrick Patrick Mahomes, the most winningest quarterback, and uh, Sterling Hundley, the most winningest <laughs> illustrator, right? Well, he, Close he's won a lot of awards. But most winningest most. alive or? No. Most not winningest even, not even in, most, most winningest. For, probably in, for his, his age, his, uh, his age. I think that's the best way to put it. Most winningest, most winningest of his age in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> it goes beyond that. I'm sorry. I butchered that. Yeah. Works for me. That's for okay. anybody that, for anybody that popped in late, uh, John was talking about Nikolai Fetchin. Uh, you know, it's going to feel about this. We're drawing football and these are the kinds of like football stats that get given out during games. <laughs> oh my goodness this is like this guy like, rushed for this many yards yeah. on a home game you know on a thursday when it's raining oops i forgot yeah. to turn my other camera so let's let's bounce around and Cassandra, what are you doing over there? Um, trying to get the Feast of Bacchus going over here. Um, yeah, I'm going to rephrase that. What and why? <laughs> well, no, seriously, I think that's a great question. Why are you doing it that way? Uh, so uh, this gives me a lot of room to figure it out. So right now, this is not figured out. Think I don't have the head tilt right, so I'm going to be adjusting a lot. But first, I start with the silhouette of the figure. And by the way, this is which is this cardboard, um, and I put GAC 100 on it to seal it, and then I do acrylic paint on top, and I start with just a pretty neutral silhouette, um, and then from there, I just start to build my value. I do just mid-tones. I don't go dark, dark, dark. I don't go light, light, light. I'm just, while I'm sorting through it, um, I'm just starting to build the shapes that I'm seeing. Gives me lots of room to mess up, which I like. Room to mess up is good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Adam? What uh, so I, 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 I wanted to do the Feast of Bacchus, but then he wasn't in the official um, reference. Thank you for playing by the rules, Adam. Some We don't all cheat. Teacher's pet. He he's not drawing the <laughs> feast of Bacchus. It's not drawing hive cannon. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. So I'm I'm drawing uh, uh, uh is I'm drawing Bacchus's brother. <laughs> Does anyone know who Bacchus's brother was? The Bacchus, Tra the brother. Oh, of I Bacchus. thought you were like Travis. <laughs> oh, right. right. No, I'm actually thinking like mythologically. I was hoping that it would actually want accidentally make sense, but I don't. I don't know my mythology. 
Oh, don't ask a question you don't know the answer to. Adam. No, no, it's, no, no. I that that's why I ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I started off um kind of silhouetting shapes and looking for proportions, but then I got sucked into a space way too early, and and now I'm just hoping that I don't draw anything else in the wrong place. Um, but that said, sometimes you do get sucked into things too early, and the way to kind of psychologically to get through it is if you've drawn it accurately, you've now got a really good measuring stick for everything else. Hmm. So there's, there's a, there's a, you know, there can be a, a plus side. Um, you know, if you, if you've gone too far and then gone like back to visit, Oh, wait a minute, I've still got the rest of him to do. Um, what you want to avoid then is getting stuck on an elbow and stuck on a, you know, and winding with a bunch of disparate elements that don't line up. Um, but if you can get something that, um, you know, where you've at least got like a, like I said, a good measuring stick to judge your other proportions by, um, that's that's what I'm telling myself to make myself feel better about my process today. Um, when I came in, actually, um, Cassandra was saying something about, you know, how difficult it is to do people whose like mouths are open, right? Um, which, which is tricky because um, in a lot of cases, what it throws it off is people will throw their heads back while they open their mouth wide to scream. But I think it's helpful for us to remember that like the, um, you know, the top of your, your skull doesn't, doesn't actually move when you scream, right? It's just an angry person and a yelling person are defined very much by what their lower jaw does um, and how it pulls the, the skin around the face because you know it um one of the things i i point out to, to students kind of to gross them out but because they'll remember it is that all of this around the face you know from under your lip to just below your eyes and you know at your cheekbone so much of your face is just one big pouch that stretches it out or compresses as you open and close your mouth Yep, so true. It ranks right up there with, you know, your lips are the inside of your mouth wrapping around the outside of your face. Deep thoughts by Adam. Right. <laughs> I, I was I was teaching afternoon art lessons today, so I'm like rearing to go. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> you're in, you're in prime form. Right. When when I when I'm teaching like a really long college class, it was I felt I always felt bad for my kids because I'd get home, and they'd be like, "Dad, do you want to see what I drew?" And I'd I'd stop them and be like, "All right, buddy. Um, just so you know, I've been looking at other people's drawings for six hours and telling them what they're doing wrong that whole time. <laughs> do you want me to see what you were drawing?" And sometimes they'd go, "Maybe after dinner." <laughs> All right. So fun, uh, fun fact you were asked, you were talking about Bacchus and, uh, brothers or siblings. Yes. Um, I did not know that Bacchus was originally diet di I I'm going to butcher this. Dionysus. 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 Yeah. Um, which, uh, started out focused on fertility and then just was threw the towel in on that and went into just wine making. <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty fun and was like rebrand rebranded was like i am i'm just doing wine <laughs> like that one felt too complicated let's just work on the grapes that's sometimes if that's you, cool yeah if you if you look photos of dionysus it's like just chiseled like greek statue and then bacchus is like a cherubian i mean it looks like jason kelsey <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It looks like um, he's having fun. Yeah, but uh you were asking about siblings. Um a lot of no 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 direct siblings, but a ton of half siblings. Athena, Hermes, Aphrodite, uh Persephone, Artemis, like basically everyone. Hermes has a pretty good love story, doesn't he? 
Don't they all? I, I, I know very little about Greek mythology like, other than that it's pretty okay. sensational. Stories like country songs. Like they, they've got lots of bad decisions in their love stories. But I thought you know, there's lots of art about Hermes. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to figure if I'm drawing Hermes, basically. That's all. You could. <laughs> I'm just taking yeah, I, I don't know. It, I, I would say Travis Kelsey is like kind of on an Icarus trajectory right now. <laughs> 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 He's getting pretty close to the sun. A little too, little too close. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. um, do you know my name is is like comes from Greek mythology? I did not know that, Cassandra. Yeah, okay. yeah Cassandra. So apparently uh, Apollo fell in love with Cassandra and to get her attention, he gave her the gift of prophecy, but she didn't want him back. So he turned the gift into a curse that she um, can tell people what's going on, but no one will believe her. So she told everyone about what was going to happen with Troy. And everyone's like, you're a horrible person that just doesn't know how to be happy for people. Wow. And like, then everything went horribly wrong. And then they're like, you're a witch and you brought us upon it. So my name means like, bad moon and unheated prophetess so basically my name means i told you so yeah <laughs> i i just really quickly i'm going to say we should be moving on to the uh the second uh photo reference um this one's 20 minutes please post your work uh share it on instagram with hashtag drawing hive at visual arts passage and our tag for the night which is dynasty hive hashtag dynasty hive uh, please share your work. We're moving on. Um, that's a uh, that's really interesting, Cassandra. That's a that that's not what inspired them to name you Cassandra, though, is it? Or is that no? My okay. my parents just really liked the name, but yeah, you know, they joke that I was aptly named later because I'm like, mm, you know, have you thought that through? I mean, it's a great testament to like the the narrative of mythology, which is just like that's a like that's a banger story of like of a curse like if you had to come up with like a creative curse <laughs> that's a really awesome curse yeah and so like i you know i have all all of these friends are like my name means hope and my name means grace and i'm like bad moon and unheated prophetess <laughs> but if i tell you not to do that don't complain later you should listen i may know something here John, that that looks perfect. You got him so well. Well, I'm not sure I'm, what I'm going to do with it, though. I, I love that immediately, like, got to have those numbers in. <laughs> I want, I want to make the picture. <laughs> get my picture behind me, and then figure out. I don't know if I'm going to go like, dump oil on top of this, or mm, mm -hmm. keep building up in acrylics, and then like finish it with uh i do know one thing i get in a terrible habit i don't know if you i hold my brushes and you can't do that with acrylic <laughs> no because they all dry out they'll dry out on you i do it with oil paint all the time i, I just don't use acrylic that much um that is so funny well i don't use any acrylic for like long periods of time yeah you're pretty fast getting through the acrylic phase John, you have not talked about your process. So Adam and I did talk to talk to us about what you're doing. Well, I'm trying to decide. Um, I did a pretty comprehensive drawing here um, where I think I depicted him pretty well. Um, good roadmap. I'm going to push it back one more time with, um, I want it to be darker than it is. It's not dark enough uh, in the flesh tone. And then I'm going to decide, I'll probably work on top of it. I don't know if I'll use like crayons or paint or to render it. Mm. But the most important part is to make my picture here. Meaning get the drawing taken care of. Everything's where it's supposed to be. Even throwing in some color. 
a couple of, you know, the one of the things I didn't look at is uh, I crop this, but I also drew it down further. So I have more of him. I know there's numbers right here somewhere. I got to draw them in. <laughs> I got to go back and look at my, my pre cropped photo. Hmm. But that's easy to do. Um, I'm working on masonite sealed with exterior house paint on all sides and ends and edges and everything else because Cassandra makes me do that. Archivability, folks. That's, That's right. Thing. Not that anybody's going to care much about that for this piece, but hey, uh, you never know. Yeah, maybe it will come out okay, right? It already like that is looking fantastic. I don't think I don't even think I'm going to paint. That's at the Super Bowl. That's from last Super Bowl, actually, <laughs> at Super Bowl Fifty Seven. So I think I'll leave that off. <laughs> Must be so hard having to pick between Super Bowls. <laughs> I know. I know next year when we're doing 59. Right. Ray, right. Would, Ray would have a real problem with me saying that. Uh, well, John, I'll, I'm going to start forwarding you the response emails I got from our uh, <laughs> our announcement of tonight's theme. Everybody from uh, San Francisco, uh, Zipkin, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I probably should have filtered them out of our uh, our e-blast for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we were talking about it. We'll, we will next year draw the winners again. Or we just won't. And uh, if somebody clip the somebody clip this, somebody clip this and send it to me next year, and I'll I'll stand to my word. <laughs> you know what's really interesting? I think would be an interesting fact. Will Taylor Swift be a part of it if they made it? So then, I heard she got like, you know, they tallied up how many times they showed her, and she got like five minutes of airtime, where people for advertising spend. I don't know, like a million dollars for 30 seconds. And, you know, she was she was advertising for them, basically. Yeah, well, uh, I was at um, a production studio that does a lot of commercials that end up on air for stuff like that mm -hmm. during the Super Bowl. And so they are all watching, obviously. But they were talking about the people um, in the crowd placed around Taylor Swift. So you had like Blake Lively. Right. So, mm -hmm. friend, but then Ice Spice was really interesting because I'm assuming that there's like an upcoming collab. I know very little about it, but you were just like, oh man, some PR person was working hard <laughs> that month to be like, I need Ice Spice next to Taylor at the Super Bowl. Ice Spice? Ice Spice. Yeah. She's a rap. She's a great rapper. I really love her music. Uh, but, um, but I mean, example, like, you know, not, I, I would say a household name, if you're of like a certain age and you're into a certain type of, you know, pop culture and music, but, um, but still somebody that benefits dramatically by being on TV during the most watched televised event, you know, of all time. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like interesting. I, I was like, you, you start to think about things as like, oh, nothing was, you start realizing like this was, a lot of this was, all of this was orchestrated. <laughs> I, uh, I would, not I, all of it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going that way. I'm saying the per, the people are surrounding Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. I can say that yeah. those five minutes of Taylor Swift airtime though, you know, we might be at the point where advertisers were sort of like vying for, you know, the like if they if she wasn't shown enough and that made non-football people stop watching the Super Bowl, like 
Like that's something advertisers are probably thinking about now. Well, that's like, a great point, Adam. That and, there was a there was a delicate balance. <laughs> I recently that the NBA is doing things with you know contracts where um yeah. if you're a star player, you're only allowed so much time out of the game, particularly during like prime commercial periods. Huh. Wow. And uh, likewise game like teams are only allowed there's a certain amount of like top earning players that have to be on the court at the same time yeah. and allowed like nights off or, but it's all based upon I tuned in to watch this game. So-and-so better be playing. And the advertiser is counting on that many people watching the game because that person's playing. Huh. Well, Adam, that's, there's actually a huge amount of controversy over that right now. Yeah. Because people are resting their star players. Yeah. And they're having, major controversy that oh lebron's not playing tonight because he's resting and he's in a city that they've sold a lot of seats <laughs> because uh Le it's lebron i mean that's that that's a really interesting scenario yeah. well the most the most i mean the world the world sport football for the world messi that was the big drama this past week with messi right yeah yeah but the, the NFL, I wouldn't put it past them to actually start calculating whether or not Taylor Swift will be at the game. Huh. Yeah. So yeah. There. I mean, I mean, like, I mean, not to, you know, beat a dead horse and go on about it too long, but like a football fan that like loves to watch the game is going to tolerate like the annoyance of that much longer than a Taylor Swift fan that doesn't really care too much about football is going to watch and be like, where's Taylor? Right. You know? So they, they've got, they've got some, they've got some wiggle room. Um, we had a, at the office I go into, there was a bit of a bet earlier, early, early, early in the season when it all started, uh, how long things were going to last. And um, I lost immediately. I was out so fast <laughs> and i did i did a bunch of data research i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna like aggregate all of the data on taylor swift's previous relationships <laughs> and i was like this has got like three months and i was like totally wrong um so that it's an ongoing so it's an ongoing uh pool yeah so what do they like what do you win if you uh um it's like a lunch I had to buy a lunch. You know, so you don't really win anything. It's just you lose. <laughs> you know, because like the person winning, like this, the the person winning was the person that said, I think they're going to get married and it's going to be forever. <laughs> so like, that's a tough, that's a tough person to beat in this. They went for the long game. So, but no, it was a, uh, it was a fun, you know, like I sports are great when there's like that side fodder to it. That's like, you know, like the outside story to a sport. I love it. Oh, yeah. Give a little narrative to it. Pull, that's what pulls people in that are like not fans. Like, like every season I, I, you see that with like any sport, but this year it was like insane, obviously, but um, it makes it fun for everybody. I don't know. Definitely. Yeah. So, John, that's looking great. John, somebody was asking how how long have you been working on that uh, that piece right there? This one? Yeah. Oh, uh, I started probably fifteen twenty minutes before we. Uh, I, you know, the only thing I did was draw. Yeah. And um, then you took a break before your talk. So, yeah, I missed the first pose pretty much most of the first pose. And so, I don't know, I may be, I may be 45 minutes to an hour into it. I don't know. Not enough. I'm struggling on this. I thought I could get this. And then it's body too small. I, <laughs> yeah. It comes with a lot of pressure that. This is not the time to make the body too small. Yeah, the body's too small. It needs to be more cherubian. 
These are big people. <laughs> I just like hearing you constantly say Trubian. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make it more Trubian. and there you go <laughs> it happened so fast cassandra <laughs> just a, a couple strokes <laughs> and... we gotta we gotta catch up with all that yeah so any shows on the horizon right now that you're preparing for? Or do you have your 2024 calendar you're working on? Oh Is my it? gosh. Yeah, I um I get excited about too many opportunities. So I um I just had two shows this month. I have one show next month. End of April I have a solo show. Beginning of May I have two shows. Three shows and two shows in june stuff i've set up so far that's impressive each of those shows like how much like are, are there varying degrees of work or is it are yeah they, like my solo different? is going to be 12 pieces um and all the other shows are like one piece but um it's a it's a it's a lot of stuff yeah Because I just get excited about it all. Uh, I'm trying to remember if I have other months. So, oh, and I have, I've already uh, accepted a show for August too. So I, I think I've got 11, sh 12 shows scheduled right now, but there's going to be a bunch more. How many shows did you do in 2023? Um... 17 2022 was even more though that was like 23 i think oh man i've been telling people 16 do you yeah. think is there a magic number no <laughs> it's no. just like when i have a solo um that knocks down the amount of shows because that solo yeah. requires more work so it's just depending on like the solo and like last year i had a mini solo and a solo so that like it was the same amount of work. It was just less shows because like those uh, two of those shows were much bigger shows required more work. Um, I, I was laughing about all the train stuff because I'm in a show that we get because uh, Richmond is a train city, John, as you know. Um, so <laughs> we're all getting model toy trains that we're supposed to paint, oh. we're supposed to do something with them. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, when I was there, I lived in the, um, I rented a place in the tobacco row. Oh, yeah. Underneath tobacco the, bottom. Yeah, underneath the um, train tracks. I mean, it's like they had an overhead train that went by this big trestle. And I realized something. I'd go out running in the evening. You don't run under a train trestle. Nope. nope. You look down, yeah. you keep spraining your ankles from all the bolts and parts that fall off those trains. Also, you can get some hot oil on you that way, too. Yeah. I don't know what a train trestle is. It's just like an elevated, it's like a bridge, a long yeah. bridge. Just yeah. for trains, though. Yeah. There was a body of water really close by. It was going over the canal. Yeah. Was that near Belle Isle that you were? I don't know where Belle Isle is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Tobacco Row it was like um, pretty close to the you know, the canal, uh, what's the, um, uh, Reynolds, was it Reynolds trap? What was the, uh, or the cellophane? What, what was the, yeah, that's Reynolds. Uh, yeah. So I, I would run, that was kind of on my route. I would run right by that after about, I don't know, three quarters of a mile from my place. Nice. Here's a, uh, it's not a question, but I just want to, let you all know we've got a very young artist with us i'm going to keep it anonymous um and this is their first time drawing or or painting anything that is not anime or manga uh -oh. it is it is so challenging and so much fun um any advice for a young artist that's uh making the leap 
Uh, yeah, in pra pra practice observational drawing a lot. You know, look at, you know, carry a sketchbook with you uh, or draw on loose paper or whatever, but draw what you see. You know, just take uh, take some time and, you know, draw the, um, draw your world and train your eye and hand to be able to reproduce something. And, drawing, and, is, drawing is a tool that will never not serve you well as an artist. And manga has, it's got, it's got good and bad habits built into it. Like, body proportions are actually pretty good, right? Like the, the you know, how many heads high someone is, how their arms and legs move. But you do want to watch for like the thickness and thinness of those those parts, right? That you don't want to fall too much into to this sort of like how to draw type habits that come with it. Um, when it comes to their faces, the one, the one thing I, I discovered over time was that um, I would make fun of, like manga and anime noses a little bit. But the manga nose is actually this little this little shape right under the tip of your nose. There's like a this downward facing triangular plane, you know, between your nostrils and under the the upward facing tip. But that's the manga nose. And you can actually use what you know about that and build Look for that landmark on his face. It's right here. And you can build your nose out from that. Um, so it's so, and I say that just so you don't feel like you're like trying to start completely over. There are, um, you know, landmarks and proportions that you've probably memorized that you will see in your observed world, but you want to pay attention to the exceptions where reality you know all unfolds its own like you know universe of, of shapes and language great great point um also thank you for pronouncing it correctly <laughs> i i butchered I, it <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure i i might not have, no um, you did you did you did <laughs> you pronounced it correctly I, I heard the phrase once i'm a reader not a talker that's, no. I guess, my deal. <laughs> I'm actually neither. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, you're a reader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but if you ask my dad, John, I wasn't because he's like, he's like, you're reading like children's books. <laughs> like, yeah, but your dad was like an epic proportions. You can't. Yeah, I know. Right? That <laughs> yeah, reading like, uh, if it's not history, it's not a book. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like that. That era of. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. My dad would be shocked to see what has happened with the history channel. <laughs> Somebody was talking about what, what goes on at the history channel, like late at night where it's basically just like all alien and Bigfoot shows. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, what is, what is the night programming for the history channel? You know, it's cryptid time, right? Yeah, exactly. No, thank you for uh, joining as a new artist and uh, way to yeah. way to go out on a limb. It's not easy to do something new. Oh, that's awesome! Glad yeah. you're... That's how you that's how you grow as an artist. Uh, you try something. I'm also just blown away that somebody from that generation can tune in and enjoy us, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, it's a great affirmation <laughs> so john you've been painting uh quite a few thursdays in a row now has it has it gotten uh, more comfortable doing it? Because I know you just don't do that on camera often. And well, I'm I'm um I have been painting like career wise a lot. Oh yeah, I didn't mean that. 
changing my changing my mindset for Thursday. Uh, and it's helped me like in, you know, my professional world is to, you know, push myself around a little bit, do things. Um, it, the biggest thing is I don't want to change. I have to like go to go to pastel and draw and even kind of to do what I am doing tonight. I have to change my studio around a little bit. I have to, and I, and then that's changing my brain around a lot. So um, I don't know. I I just I like um uh, it just felt right. I mean I've been do I was I don't know how many hundreds of pastel drawings I did for mm -hmm. the last few years in here. And so it just felt good to do something different. Which was real interesting. The only time I would do like pastel drawings was during the Illustration Academy summer program um, or a demo for a class or something, but it was not part of my regular practice. It was almost always oil, you know, or mixed media or something. I don't know if that answered your question, Timmy, but. No, it was very, uh, very helpful. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's an interesting thing to. I mean, also, I think people might not underestimate the, the the challenge, or I guess the pressure of drawing on camera for people, the many a lot of people you don't know. I mean, that's got to be nerve wracking. And talking while you do it. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a there's a little bit of that going on. Uh, there's no doubt. I always, you know, I always think about, man, am I, am I just going to get in front of a bunch of people and just bomb? Oh yeah. My last one, I just bombed for Bacchus. Well, it ha you know, it definitely happens, but I, you know, Cassandra, you don't bomb very often. I'll say that much. <laughs> well, that one just really didn't work and that's okay. But that's the thing that I think is really important is you know, you're not going to paint perfect every day, but if you keep painting every day, you're not perfect. It's not going to be as bad as what used to be. You're not perfect. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I'll put it this way. And uh, this is Timmy. I'm sorry. I apologize. This is a, a sports analogy. Uh, in tennis, like really great, you know, really great players hit their best shot. Even if it's a really great player, they hit their best shot like, two out of 10 times, but their second best shot, they hit like eight or nine out of 10 times. Somebody that's, you know, a mediocre player, their best shot may be like a really great player's third level <laughs> or fourth level that they can hit nine out of 10 times. And me a mediocre player can only hit it one out of 10 times. Um, if you're not striving to raise that game all the time you can't grow very fast and as an artist it's really important to you know to try new things and push push yourself to do you know to go to that next level and that's really that's probably why this place still exists is because number one it's like definitely takes timmy and i some time to put this together and if it didn't have value for me as an artist, I wouldn't do it. And I realized that, you know, every week I got to make, I got to do something if I want to or not, <laughs> I have to kind of force myself to, to do it. And I think that's healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. There's something about just continuing to show up brings so much growth. I agree. Not sure I'm showing up right now, but. Oh, it, yours looks awesome. That's not what I, or not even close to where I want it. Um, it's just, uh, it's still an underpainting. Just trying to set set myself up here. Mm 
And then I'm also trying to, I'm going to, Cassandra, I'm going to do what you do. I'm going to take a pause and use my hair dryer. <laughs> Hair dryers are awesome. You want them only for acrylics. It's not going to work for oils, but water-based, water-based mediums, uh, your hair dryer can be your best friend. But you know, if you if you're just really really thinning down your paint to tone your canvas, um, yeah, you you can you it'll work on mineral spirits. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you know, hair dryers. There's one right at my feet here. Just that's the kind of studio I operate. Things are just on the floor. Uh, here's a question. Uh, not all painters draw, correct? No, not all painters draw. Um, um, I'll say that, I mean, there's people that, I don't know. I, I, that's a that's a tough one. There's a there's a very elusive answer to this, and that is maybe a pure abstractionist uh, wouldn't draw, but somebody that just yeah. like painting is drawing. <laughs> um, I mean, you're just doing it with paint, um, right? I, you know, the last couple of weeks I did, you know, and you know, Cassandra's well. Just look at what Cassandra's doing the last couple of weeks, not last week, but the weeks before, I was just throwing down a blob and lose my drawing completely and have to draw it back out with paint. Uh, Cassandra's just starting with flat shape and painting back into it. That requires a very high drawing acclimate. Cassandra, you want to take a swing at that? Sure. I mean, I'm not showing it today. <laughs> I seem to be bombing my paintings today. Uh, so, uh, at other times, I have it more pulled together, but yeah, I l let the silhouette lay out where I think things should be, and I'm trying to find them again right now, but I know his mouth is open. I'm trying to figure out where his teeth are. They seem to be about here. His mouth ends here, and I'm just letting myself try to find where some of the lights are again when I just slapped down some shadows roughly and I'm just going to go back and forth kind of trying to find and lose as I build it all up. Everybody, we are moving on to the third and final and longest uh, uh, reference for the night. So please post your work to Instagram with a uh, hashtag drawing hive hashtag dynasty hive and average arts passage we're going to check it out at the end of the night yeah somebody said jackson pollock didn't paint or didn't draw <laughs> uh he'd argue with that he would argue with that. yeah, yeah I, I mean I'm right he would and he could like it completely yeah. depends upon how you define drawing is drawing yeah. creating image and shape like yeah it, the media that you use doesn't necessarily define it. Uh, Alex was a student of Thomas Hart Benton, and I promise you, Jackson Pellet could draw. He, he also uh, he actually drew during his therapy. Um, really? Yeah, he was apparently kind of curmudgeonly and didn't. Uh, he was in talk therapy and didn't really talk much. Um, so he wound up drawing for for it was my understanding. Huh, interesting. So it was still like this other mode of expression for him that wasn't how he painted. Are there examples of those drawings available? I'd just be curious to see what that looked like. Must, um, I learned about this when I was in grad school. So it, it must be, I don't know if there was, maybe there was like a little show in, you know, in New York, got a gallery that came up with them or something. Um, I, haven't, I haven't looked for them. Now that I've said this out loud on the internet, I hope it exists. <laughs> <laughs> 
food. <laughs> They're going to hold you to it, Adam. All right. Ugh, I do not have the mojo tonight. I think we've all agreed that your 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 night with less mojo is still a pretty good. <laughs> uh, not tonight, but thanks. I appreciate that, guys. I think I gave all my. I was painting a Yorkie from World War II all day today. <laughs> well, well, well as we the, totally understand now. And as, as look as the official artist to the stunt doubles to the stars, <laughs> I I'm I'm fully fully ready to give you a pass. Thank you, friend. I've been painting trees and fountains all day. Okay, here's another great question. Uh, what, in your opinion, would be the best blend tool for a new sketcher? I use a flexible eraser and a wrapped paper pencil. Um, I don't blend. I actually, when you're sort of getting into sketching, I almost recommend against it because sometimes we use it. Like I stopped doing it because I, you know, I realized when I did it, I was most likely sort of trying to sort of hide things or cover like a lack of commitment. Uh, if you can learn to, you know, control your tools so you can get dark to light and you can graduate it in the way that you want to, you know, and at the rate that you want to, you can decide where light ends and dark begins and how your midtones get you from one to the other. And a blend tool is sort of like, you're almost like outsourcing that. Um, uh I use a blend to blend tool a lot of times, like in backgrounds to make different textures, uh, to pull things together for textures. I usually, you know, if I if I'm going to blend something on a face, I use uh, and it's like a graphite. I assume you're working in graphite. Talking about a blend tool, it um, is that what you were you were thinking, Adam? Um, I was I was thinking that, yeah, yeah, me too. Um, but like a stump. Uh, which is just kind of like a, they call them tortillas sometimes. They kind of rolled up um, paper real tightly that you can blend with. Um, but if I was going to like blend graphite together on a page, I would just use like a, pick a really harder, a much harder lead pencil and just very lightly pull it together. Like if you're using a, you know, a, a 4B and a, you know, 6B to draw with, take like an HB that's sharp, and then you can use it as a, a blend tool, just, you know, pulling those two things together. But I like what Adam said about it, but, but you know, there's no rules. Um, you know, the artists that I showed, you know, tonight, Fetchin, um, he was, he was working, he got all that, a lot of that interesting texture, on on um, rice paper and dragging charcoal over rice paper and um and then he would pull some of it you could tell where areas of it are you know he'd even take a brush and pull move some of the charcoal uh and and hard graphite around together with the brush brush can be really helpful um dale stefanos uses a, a makeup brush I would look at, I would pull up Dale's work. He does, re, he can do really, really high finish um, uh, graphite. I mean, yeah. He does some really, really high finish graphite. That's not all he does, but he does it really well. And he sometimes uses powder graphite. He uses graphite sticks. He blends things with makeup, you know, makeup brushes and stuff. Variety of mark making is really, really helpful and really good. Hey, give me a second here. You can talk. You can explain more, Adam. 
Actually, you know what, what dawned on me is, is is when it comes to blending, I guess one of the things you want to because then you'll look at Dale's work and it's, I mean, it's flawless. And yeah, and Dale, Dale would have like almost possibly the opposite advice as me about blending, right? Um, but at the same time, when you look at his work, there is these, he still has these very clear value shifts. And then there's, you know, blending and subtlety that happens inside of them and, you know, blending that may happen at the edge of the shift. Um, so maybe it's one of the things you want to think about is as you're blending, and I think this is where people kind of get get caught up, is it's not so it's that blending is bad, is you want to make sure that as you blend, you're thinking about how fast or slow one value blends into another, right? Is it just a subtle thing right at the edge of it, or is it a long gra graduation from one to the other? Um, and so I guess it's just like as 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 you blend, um, and yeah, the, the 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 blending steps are a good way to go. Um, you know, when I, when I have done it, it's like sometimes I'll even just grab like a, a tissue or a little you know crumpled up piece of um, a paper towel. Um, but but yeah, you you just want to make sure that you're you're not you're not like. Um, you want to make sure that there's there's intention, there's intention, and um, that you're thinking about like how fast or slow you want to get from one value to another. John, uh, what do you? Here's another. We got it. We, the questions are stacking up. What is your most preferred paint? Um, well, I, I think oil paint's got the most flexibility over anything. Yeah. I always, I, I always finish in oil. Um, there was times early in, earlier in life that I, I, I kind of learned how to paint and wash. And I think that that was very helpful for me to understand that. Um, but I think that, you know, I'll start some, this is going to get oil on top of it in some way, even if it's like you know, color pencil and oil crayons and dry brush oil paint. Um, but I, I use acrylic as an under, you know, underpainting and then almost finish everything in oil. And it's, it is the most flexible by far. People generally get, like when they're starting out, they can be intimidated by it, but it's actually probably the easiest to use. I'll I'll ask the others if they disagree or agree with me on that. Yeah, I I I actually totally agree with that, and I even like I I don't think it's the thing that I'm best at, but it is my favorite. <laughs> um, you know, I'm I'm better at other things, but I love oil more, and you know, some of it is the flexibility of it. Um, some of it, you know, because it, and 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 as far as color theory goes, it's like one of the best of the like. You can paint it as a very real, like what you see is what you get. Like, you know, you can glaze, you can scumble, but you can mix a color, put it down. It's that color. Um, and, you know, unlike other things that dry through evaporation, your oil paint kind of, you, you don't kind of put down a wet color and see how much it shifts as it dries. Um, so when you're, when you're, when you're learning and, and it, it, it when you're learning to it, it actually builds discipline because you, if you fuss with things too much, you can lose them. So, so I think it, you know, when I started doing it, it actually helped with my decision making. I probably would have preferred to go over this one more time with acrylic, but I, want to make it look like something before the end of the night. So I'm kind of pushing it a little bit. I love oil, I think. Um, but I always love acrylic first because it just lets me work faster. Right. I get impatient for the layers. Yeah. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. 
I love how oil looks. I feel like there's a look that I can get from oil that I can't get in acrylic. Uh, in acrylic. So, I mean, I do the start in acrylic and finish oil for that reason. So I love oil, but I feel like I battle it if I do only an oil painting. Gouache is my second favorite. And it's the, it's the one I trust myself with more often. You know, one day I want to love something enough to yell at it like these guys are yelling at stuff. <laughs> I feel like I've had days where in my head I'm yelling at my painting like this. <laughs> that is an interesting question, Adam. In, uh, intensity to that degree bubbling to the surface is pretty rare in, like for most people. Like an in like an intense focus, you know? Yeah, it, you know, it, it makes me more patient when, you know, say the day after a game and you know, people start criticizing a football player for throwing a tantrum. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, this is like this big person who's channeling their aggression. Oh, mm -hmm. so, you know, like I, you know, we we expect them to all be Mr. Miyagi. And I think that's a lot to ask of somebody who's, you know, pummeling and getting pummeled. And and then you you put them in a situation where yeah. they think it's not fair and say, just keep your cool, buddy. And you know, they they're yeah. they're at the peak of yeah, this, this. I don't I don't feel that often. Yeah, that's uh I mean, yeah, there's a lot of people that talk about that, the switch of intensity that is a pretty difficult toggle to control. Um, but, you know. Think about the very beginning of this game and Chris Jones, you'll see, go Google it. You'll see the pictures of him with tears coming down of his eyes when they were playing the mm -hmm. uh, Star Spangled Banner. Yeah. And th that's an emotional dude. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's an emotional, like you know. that's a, there's a huge amount of emotion in a 340 pound person. Um, that yeah. you can you can see how invested they are in it. Can't hide that. Kelsey yelling at the his at Andy Reid. Uh, you see the emotion come out. I mean, I, I always think of Whiplash. I always think of the movie Whiplash. Yeah. I, think it's, I always think it's like the best. It it in my opinion, it's the best like cinematic telling of of like genius and and like dedication and obsession and and like how painful it is and i knew athletes that were like d1 athletes in college that i was friends with and like to perform at that level and be the best and even and at the ncaa level your dedication your whole life revolves around it and um it's also like a really rude awakening when it leaves you know when it when your life changed because like i had friends that when we graduated it was the week following graduation was like the first week they didn't have a practice or like a thing they had to be at at 5 a.m or you know but like i always think of that like with whiplash it's like it all comes at a cost you know it's like a hard you have to be a pretty serious person to be that um that intensely invested and it probably takes a toll i mean it definitely takes a toll on your personal life yeah i always think about you know like <laughs> just think about how hard somebody trains to be a like a sprinter in the olympics and okay that was 10 seconds and i'm done 
you know, it's it's just it's just amazing the effort that's put into it or gymnasts. I mean, they're all, there's so many, but the amount of dedication, a little bit different in the arts though. You know, it's like, um, I, I feel like I've, you know, trained thousands and thousands of hours. And I also feel like I'm not, I'm not young. I feel like I still have time. Not a lot of time. But I feel like I still have time. I can still get better. I can still keep doing the things I've been doing since I was in my teens. I also think a lot of the the those other areas, whether they're sports or music, like it's about a public performance of some sort versus, you know, the arts, whether painting or illustration, it's a lot of it is isolated. So there could be these things going on, but it's behind closed doors. So you don't see the frustration of not getting it correct or the wonderful feeling of getting it right. Like a lot of that is hidden from view. You just get to see the finished piece. Right. Yeah, where the, yeah, um, yeah like the, you know, the, the fact that there's this, you know, you, no matter how many times you've practiced, you can still drop the ball in front of a whole lot of people, you know. Um, but you know, the, where where the parallel into visual art kind of comes through in a in a funny way, and it's not a direct comparison, so I'm not sure where I'm going with this. But is the idea, you know, how long do you spend on a painting, and how long does someone look at a painting? Right. So there there is still like there's a similar sort of trade off between the intensity that goes into something, and then the the consumer relationship with it. Well, I, I I'll repeat something, and I know Cassandra, you know him, so you'll 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 laugh when I say this. But I was standing next to George Pratt when somebody who, you know, just I don't even know if they were an artist. They made the comment to him that while he was doing a demonstration, or after he was done with it, they just looked at him and said, "Oh my God, I wish I could do that." He said, you were just so blessed that you could do that. And he, George turned to me. I didn't know very, George very well at this time. He said, God, if I could bleed through my eyes. <laughs> so they could see how hard this was. Um, you know, how many hours and how much time I put in this to, to be able to do this. And I just thought, oh, man, that is so good. Mm-hmm. I, I always have to get, when I'm working with painting with straight oil, doing a multimedia like I'm doing right now, I always got to get my value structure right and get my value a little bit darker than I want it. So I can, because I'm going to do all my drawing with lights on top of this. And so I spend a lot of time, just doesn't look like I'm getting anywhere, but I am. I'm getting um, a value that I can put lights on top of and draw. The lights are going to do my drawing. That's a really good thing to point out too. Like the process of, you know, you know, you need to make things darker because your next step in your process is then to bring in the light. So it oh. won't work if you've gone too light. It's just not, I couldn't get it dark enough. At least I thought I had it dark enough. I never got it dark enough with my, and so I'm just using like a super dry, I have like four palettes out from, actually this is from a landscape painting, but that's what my palette looks like. For the painting I was working, well, this has probably been out like four days now, maybe five or six days. And I like using like really dry oil paint in this process. So I'm just kind of like scumbling it in. And I don't I don't want to put heavy paint down. Um, Something I think would be good to explain is we talk about it a lot, but I don't know if we've actually ever 
explain like why an underpainting? What is the importance of an underpainting? Like you're mentioning a lot that this this is an underpainting for you. Like why not? Why isn't it not all just? Well, in this case, it's going to be like all work together. Like some of the paintings I did, um, I I did it all in the last couple of weeks. I did it all in oil. I did my underpainting like a thin version. But what I try to do is establish something that I can control. And more importantly, that I can make my picture right away. Meaning, you know, get the composition, get everything right and start in a fairly loose way. Uh, that my drawing was very tight in this one. And I can really, I'm gonna use some materials and I'll just barely get it started before we get done tonight. Maybe I can finish it tomorrow or something. But, um, I'm going to get, I'm going to set this up where I'm going to go back into this with a number of things to put my lights down. And I thought about, you know, even, um, uh, I might even start with something really rough. Like what I just picked up here is a cray pie is, um, oil crayon. And I might come in here with an oil crayon and start putting some lights and oil and oil down. And what I like about what I like about the, that process of starting with something that's really crude, I can then come back and control it with oil paint, with like a dry brush oil. Let me mix up. I hadn't started painting with any lights yet, so. But I'm just looking at that, those cool values coming into his forehead. I think are really beautiful. And I would like that to be part of what I'm doing. I guess this is kind of my first swing at this here, so I don't know what it's going to be, and I'm having to look. But then I could come back in here. Now maybe put something down. It's a little bit darker. Really push the color around a little bit. This is really dried, really dry brush paint. And then I can bring even um, like this is a colored pencil. It doesn't take very well to the masonite, but it's it's it pulls it all together nicely. I could come back and it's very controllable. And I can get there pretty fast. That sound it looks a little not very controlled yet. But then I can start thinking about the, oops, the overall, the color all over this thing. And start bringing some of the color in. And that's why it's gotta be darker. And then I'll bring lights back on top of this color to define it more. And I can adjust it if it's too, if I have it too cold, I can add, I can change color real quick. Like, let me sharpen this pencil. Like I know where color lives in a head and I'll probably want to, you know, like warm up his nose a little bit and same with the top of his ear. Maybe I'll just put like a, a red over his ear in general. I might bring paint back into it.
I don't have it dark enough. I got to bring some more darks in. So far, sorry for talking too much. I shouldn't be talking this much. No, it's great. I'm not interrupting because I, I feel like it's really great to hear you talk about why you're making the choices that you're making. You know, I'm just I'm just always going back and looking at looking at my value structure. I'm looking at it in a black and white. I don't know if you can see it or not. I can't yeah, see. Yeah, you can see your see, reference. You see my reference, yeah. So the black you just seen a little yeah, you see that <laughs> you see the whole thing. I was looking at my landscape uh, <laughs> that I had up there. But I'm just trying to kind of find my way around. I can keep pushing and pulling this stuff around. And you're slow to bring the light up, right? You don't want to rush um, that. Yeah, I don't want I don't want to jump into it too fast. I mean, it's like I know we're like right here. If I wanted to, I could come in. I could even get get something granular started to, you know, feel like it's specular highlights that are on his forehead. You know, I could come in and kind of make that happen right there. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have I don't have my everything at the right value yet to do that. And I always end up with about 10 different paintbrushes in my hand because <laughs> I just kind of pick them for color. But now it's okay because you're working in oil. That's right. Yeah, and they're not drying out on me. And I like this, like a cool, cool red. Establish that dark there. And it's just kind of pushing and pulling. Okay, everybody, this is, uh, we're getting pretty close. We got the two minute warning. <laughs> it's how John and I have been watching the NFL enough. This is the two minute warning. <laughs> On the last <laughs> um, hey, wait, I'm calling a timeout right now. <laughs> yeah, John would call a timeout right now. Uh, no, so uh, if you want to make sure your work is more likely to show up, I'd start posting it now. Uh, we're going to pull up Instagram shortly. It's uh, hashtag Dynasty Hive, Drawing Hive, and Avisual Arts Passage in the caption, please. Um, yeah, we're going to go over there in uh, probably like five or six minutes. So... Uh, please get your work up and post it. D different people need a different amount of time to post all their work. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I was, uh, <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. I had to uh, file a, um, a, uh, a, a petition with the Supreme court in New York for to get a birth certificate for this dual citizenship I'm oh. pursuing. And I was on the phone with my attorney and I was, I'm filing it myself. And he was like, so you're going to want to go to this page and you're going to open an account. And I was like, all right, the account's open. And he was like, wait, what? <laughs> and I was like, it's easy, man. And he was like, oh my God, how fast do you type? And then he was like, now you're going to like, I was like, all right, I'm on page four. And he was like, what? <laughs> so it's like different. Different speeds. Yeah, I'd right? be the person that would set his expectations lower. Yeah. That's kind uh, of that's like, that's like trying to tell me how to do something digitally, Timmy. It's the same thing. Same experience you have with me. You should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was reading to him. It, John, actually, it was so close to your and I's experience. It would, it was wild. The roles were reversed. I didn't even realize it. Um, I was like reading the, you know, the behind the portal, like description of like, 
okay, so I'm on this page and it says this and this. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, no, you're not going to want to do that. <laughs> I yeah. still laugh. Uh, my my father had asked Brent Watkinson to give him a hand. He wanted to, he was embarrassed that he didn't know how to even like uh, do his do his Google search or search his browser. And so Brent went over and spent like three hours trying to get them all set up and helping him. And he said, well, what do you want to do with it, Mark? He goes, well, I'd like to, okay, like example, like buy an airline ticket. He goes, well, just go to what airline would you want to go to? He goes, well, South, let's try Southwest. And he said, um, okay, and just go in and type in Southwest. And my father just paused for a long time and just <laughs> stared at the screen. It, it was just like, just in total limbo. And Brent said, well, what's the problem? And he said, well, Where's the S? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. And Brett just said, okay, Mark, um, I'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> that's the end of our, <laughs> the end of our first class. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was great though. Where's the S? That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm actually getting somewhere now. Starting to. Yeah, you are. Values are starting to come in. Wow. Really nice, Cassandra. Uh, no, I like it. Travis, you're doing great. <laughs> Look at Adam down there. Adam, you got it, man. I I came back to him. I, I put him aside and moved on to this, this guy. But then I realized I didn't know his name, and that seemed disrespectful. So I. So if you really if you're thinking, you know, monetizing our night and trying to get the attention of the people that we draw, right. you don't you don't draw Taylor Swift. You draw Travis Kelsey, Kelsey hopefully attracting Taylor Swift. Yeah, that's <laughs> there you go. I mean, that's a great entrepreneur point. as an artist. You got to think that way. Yeah. I mean, I bet. Long. I bet Jones Jones is probably the least drawn of them. I mean, probably. Oh, I mean, no, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, by a mile. No, I mean, no, no offense. It's, that's impossible to uh, compete with. How do you compete with that? Yeah, yeah. So I would tag Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him I said that, but <laughs> Timmy said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be in the caption. He also lives in Kansas City. He's successful. Yeah. I don't know what just happened. I could have fun finishing this thing. Did you guys just hear the action news soundtrack? Uh-uh. Or was that just me? That was just you. Just you. All right, good. <laughs> no news tonight. There is some crazy stuff going on in the art world, but I don't know if it was action news appropriate. There's crazy stuff going on everywhere. That is no, true. I, I dropped my phone and uh, it hit my keyboard as I was trying to log in and the action news song started, <laughs> I was like, Oh no. <laughs> I the love that show. that happens for you. And then I couldn't turn it off. I was like trying to find out where it was coming from. And I was just like, <laughs> I've ruined the show. It was literally. <laughs> There's going to be expectations here. You got to work harder than that to ruin the show. You didn't hear anything. That's such a. Nothing, nothing. Oh, wow. Did you, it did was... you hear my pencil sharpener the last time? Yep. No, but it was mayhem over here for me. <laughs> I was. Yeah, I wonder if it was maybe it was just loud and obnoxious enough that it muted itself. You know, no. like our hair dryers. <laughs> mutes. No, it's, it's it's amazing how well Zoom does blocking that stuff out. Yeah. Because I I've used a pencil sharpener like three or four times and didn't haven't turned off my mic. Yeah, no oh, I didn't hear it at all. That's impressive. I'm surprised you guys can hear me at all.
Why? I... <laughs> He's got like a trumpet playing in the background the whole time that, I mean, early days of uh, drawing hive, Chris Payne would show up and all our videos on YouTube would get flagged because he was just like playing the radio in the background. Oh yeah, he was. And he'd be talking about what, what he was listening to. And I'd be like, Hey Chris, uh, <laughs> Just for an hour, an hour or two here. Come it's on. pretty difficult to do a video conference where one person is listening to the radio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially the hits from 1947. Yeah, it was a lot of them. You were like, you're like, ah, it's kind of impressive. YouTube even flagged that. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of classical music. Yeah. Um no, that, 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 that's fun. Well, we, I have, um, probably invested in several chairs that I didn't even have to because zoom stepped it up. Oh my gosh. The squeaky chair. I squeaky do chair. Miss your squeaky chair. Cause it drove <laughs> Timmy nuts. I can, I can bring my squeaky chairs back now. <laughs> <can't hear> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> my favorite chair is like sit, is sitting in our storage area in my house. Yeah, we almost had to buy John like one of those gamer chairs that like looks like it it goes in like a Formula One car. <laughs> he was just praying that John doesn't move, just don't don't shift. Yeah, he, yeah, but he wouldn't let me go out and like charge a Herman Miller to the. Uh, yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because you'd go get a Herman, Herman Miller. Miller chairs to try out, Timmy. One of them's going to work. Yeah, I was going to say, you'd go get a Herman Miller and it'd be like squeaky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I haven't done this in so long, like this this type of painting. I'm, I'm actually really enjoying it. Mm. It's got a long ways to go, but it's, it's uh, I'm really having fun doing it. I'll probably play frisbee with my painting after after this, but get the um. Sometimes you just gotta let it go. Yep, like I did it, I got through it, but this was not my painting night. I wonder, I wonder if Adam was there for that. Did you did, did Adam? Were you there when Greg Spolenka spoke at the academy? I love how he tells his stories too. Well, yeah. you probably you probably heard that too, Cassandra. Right? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! He was telling a story about a piece that he was just really bombing on. He was at school at Art Center, and his real good friend was Matt Mahern, who was a very successful, became a very successful, well, they both became very successful illustrators. And Matt came over to his apartment. He lived above this, you know, like, third floor above a very busy street. And he's showing him, saying, hey, what can you do to help me out and make this thing a little bit better? And he said, I don't know. I can't see very well. Let's walk out on the deck where the sunlight's better. And uh, as he's standing there, he goes, sometimes, Greg, you just got to let things go. And he just like threw it like a Frisbee out into traffic. Oh, my <laughs> like God. Like cars what? ran over it. What? Yeah. And so <laughs> he like freaks out on him. <laughs> and ran out into the street and, you know, in between the traffic and picked it up and then looked at it. He goes, God, it is better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty funny story. He's such an animated talker because he's like hopping up and down and he's gesticulating like his his knees are coming up like he's doing the stairs really fast. <laughs> it was a great story. Oh, I love that story. Yeah. So I think of that when I have a, a piece that's kind of a crash and burn. I just want to Greg's blanket. Or Matt Maher in it. Yeah, Matt Maher in it. I guess I think of Greg's blanket because he told the story and appreciated that got better. Yeah. To if you if you don't know two really good illustrators that were very popular in the '90s and early 2000s, uh, Matt Mahern went on to do some very successful, won all kinds of awards as a um, director of um, music videos. Um, he did a, he did like almost all of Nine Inch Nails stuff. Uh, I can't, I can't remember the name of everyone he did, but the, the stuff he did with Nine Inch Nails and Trent Reznor uh, was really well accepted, well received. That was such a big time, like that, those oh, yeah. are the top albums. Yeah.
Okay, I'm. Are you going there? I'm. I. It's gonna be happening any second now. I can't wait to see how much better everybody else did. It's just gonna be a thousand Taylor Swifts. <laughs> <laughs> that would be I would, funny i would love that that would be the most amazing uh power move for the hive <laughs> well, i love the first one is a taylor swift yeah. thank you marcy yeah i think we learned a lot about our demographic tonight uh, yeah we're really pushing it to the limit, john <laughs> we're, i would say this uh we are pushing it yeah doing just fine yeah, well, we'll come back with a new theme next week, and I promise you it won't be sports. No sports ball? No sports ball. Or dad talk. Or dad talk. Well, if Dale... Well, dad right, talk is going to happen. We got the dads. Yeah, yeah, there's no way. The art dads? <laughs> yeah. Setting. I love it. That was uh, When Audrey used to tune in and call you guys art dads, I thought that was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great job, Marcy. This is some great stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna wow. start going through it. I think this is great. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do that photograph. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that, you gotta post yeah. that. Uh, great job. That's nice. Oh, that's awesome. So fun. Yes. That's so much You're fun. really creative. Oh, oh I just love the most. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you did them in the background. That's Thank awesome. That. Oh, yeah. I, I've they been trying like to they're, follow. They're like a part of a quartet. Yes. Oh, that's Ooh, that's lovely. Really well done. Nice. Nice. Good job, Peter. Here you go, Peter. For wow. anybody wondering if I'm not following you, it's this is the Academy account. I got them mixed up. So this is a Peter, that's a little different. I really like it. Nice, Karen. Wow. Really good. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> that's a really fun one. I hope you all liked my theme with the, the open. It's yeah, a really it's great theme. Wow. John, sometimes it's really hard to get you to stick to a theme, but <laughs> Gary, <laughs> I love that really you chose good. open mouth. <laughs> yeah, you chose like a micro theme within yeah. the theme. <laughs> yeah. It was hard. Nice drawing, Gary. Wow. Awesome. Okay, Peter. Well done. <laughs> yes marcy that that's, might be my favorite piece you've done yet that's so funny <laughs> no, no stop 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 go back to it look at the <laughs> figure to the right i just I love that oh my god yeah you got the glasses lady perfect yeah. totally cracking me up that's beautiful uh -huh. awesome nice aj great stuff good job oh, yeah, nice. Nice, Alexander. here comes julian I can see his name. Nice. Oh, fantastic. Great stuff. Great line work. <laughs> <laughs> I love the chest hair. <laughs> I mean, I cropped the beer out of it for our photo, but. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> but I appreciate the. the oh, truth. the sweatpants. Oh, that's yes. Awesome. Very fun. Thank you. Amazing. Nice. Oh, nice. Way to go, Nicole. Oh, that's good energy, Nicole. Great energy. Whoa. Really good. Really good. Oh, Ooh. wow. See, I just, that's where I need to get my uh, value structure. Keep that there. I got to get that. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate putting our logo on jerseys. <laughs> Thank you. That's really... Thank yeah. you for doing yeah, nice I saw it on the first one. And I was like, wow, that's free. I nice. think it's going to be required, required next year in the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> awesome stuff. Nice Great stuff. job. <laughs> that's so fun. I think everybody's tailored out. <laughs> Good job. Yep. Really nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's good really job. good, Julian. Oh, that's so good. That's Look awesome. That. Very good. I'm better. Hey, you know, nice. The topic, you know, that's part of part of being a illustrator. It's like handling the topic. If you don't like it that much, these were great photos. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, the one the one photo that wasn't as really good drawing there is technically as good was the Taylor Swift photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much more flat light. 
Mm -hmm. It's good challenges. Obviously, it got me to. Oh, I, I forgot. I forgot to even say that. Yeah. And I picked. A t there was another Taylor Swift one I was going to pick that if I, if you could have pulled back on the camera, yeah. I would have been in the photo. I literally was like thirty feet from her at the game. What? Yeah, she sat. Really? In, she sat in the boot, the box right behind me. Oh wow! And you I went there. I, I got a photograph of her on my phone. Where I mean, she she was or she was maybe fifteen feet from me. There you go. Was so that, tonight, uh, tonight's theme to for me and John was the Super Bowl, but for everyone else, it was the theme was getting an assignment from an art director that you don't want to do. <laughs> 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 yeah. And you all succeeded. That's good. You all did a great job. Wow, that's really nice. I like that one. Yeah. Great job. Great yeah, so much fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Oh, that's fun, Terry. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Pretty nail polish, too. Look at that color. Oh, Gary. What's that's going so on? Good. Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Great wow. job. <laughs> <laughs> that's great awesome yeah, yeah, that's you know, great. Jeff oh, nice Jeff. oh nice good job Ooh, look see he's got his brush for like seeing all the tools like, those are the yeah. all the tools that were brought up yep great job <laughs> that's good yes very good nice Really wow. good job. These are fun. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of painting done, Terry. That's yeah. great. Very expressive. <laughs> yes. I love, I love his head. Oh my God. That thing awesome. Is awesome. <laughs> it's so much fun, isn't it? And all the faces. Wow. Taylor, yeah, Taylor's taking a bite of his arm. Yeah, but the one that takes the is incredible. <laughs> Great stuff. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, a, like a quartet. So fun. They're singing. Yeah, um, that is. <laughs> well, there's some nice stuff. And that's nice really stuff. nice. Great job, Michael. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love the close up of the mouth. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that great? Oh, oh, those are so fun. Good one. Yes, really good. That's a tough pose, man. That profile. It's a really tough. Like the profile. almost profile is a really tough thing to They're pull. Really up. hard. Mm. Great job. <laughs> yes. Well, Nicole, that's a home run. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That is an awesome piece. I'd put that. Taylor wouldn't like it, but it's an awesome piece. Yeah. Aaron, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you for that. <laughs> it's such a funny. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> really nice. Good job. Oh, that's lovely how you handled the hair. Yeah. So simple, but like really great job. Yes. This is not getting old seeing this done. It's not. Love it it. isn't. It I gotta just... look at that. I gotta look at that case at Jason Kelly, uh, Jason uh, uh Jason Kelsey. Yeah. Kelsey photograph again because I, I I didn't see everybody else got the structure of the face. I didn't pay I didn't. I bombed it. it. So I am delighted to see everyone so successful <laughs> with it. I'm glad I didn't throw a wrench in your open mouth situation, John. I, he's also yelling. Yeah, yeah. You stayed on task. You stayed on yeah. uh, theme. On point. Nice. Awesome Good stuff. Job. Always love a time lapse. <laughs> oh my God. That's the best one. This is, this is all time. I think. Slow clap here. Slow all clap. time winner. Wow. You get to follow. You're getting everything. Jason. Wow. Taylor, that is. I kind of like that one. I think that is the funniest thing anybody's oh. ever submitted for drawing time. And I love that he wrote getting some push-ups in. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. is that's the funniest post anybody's ever done. <laughs> uh, I will never forget that one. Thank you. Yeah, that is hilarious. It's like one of the things you want to unsee. <laughs> okay. This is this is the last one. And this is a great one. And that's so a really well you. done one. Yeah. Yeah, but I want to. We're going to end on this one <laughs> <laughs> because it's extraordinary. <laughs> it's extraordinary effort. Anyways, 
Uh, that was all such right, a great everybody. night, everybody. Very um, fun night. Thank yeah. you all. Adam, Cassandra, Timmy, thanks yeah. for joining. And uh, hope everyone had a good time. And we'll see you all next week with a um, less, less sports-related topic. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll come up with a theme. We'll post it on Wednesday. All right, everybody. Have see nice you, everybody. Night. Have a great week. Bye.